Hey there, women of light. It's um, Elizabeth and it's Wednesday Wisdom here and we're here with the beautiful Nikki. Uh, Nikki and I know each other through um, a business training from um, that we were both doing or we're still both doing actually. So, um, And Nikki is one of these interesting women that um, has so many different aspects to what she does that I wanted to get on. And because, we, you know, she works with women that um, are dealing with burnout and, you know, your Facebook group is Burnout and Beyond, yeah? That's correct, yeah. Yeah, so um, I know that that can happen, can be a problem in, in today's society of major burnout. So welcome, Nikki. Thank you for having me. Uh, so... Um, tell us a little bit about you because I know you've done heaps of other, heaps of things, you know, through your life. Tell us a little bit about what you've done and, and what led you to being here um, and working for yourself in this sort of this sort of um, aspect of your life. Okay, uh, I'd like to pretend I'm 22 and have no background to tell you, but I'm double that, <laughs> so I do have some life experience. Um, so a uh, bit of background to me, um, I'm a single mum. I've got a little boy, he's five years old, um, going on about 22. Um, I, <laughs> As they do, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I have been in the police force for 21 years. I haven't worked with them for a few years, but 21 years in the police force. I have been doing uh, coaching and mentoring um, and worked through a network marketing business um, for seven years. So I grew quite a large organisation um, there and, um, and still have, um, which I absolutely love. I've run three traditional businesses um, in the tutoring space. Um, my largest one was 125 students and eight staff. So, wow. yeah, that was that was so much fun because I, I get very um, rewarded by helping children. And then now I um, I spend most of my time helping women, um, like you said, um, a lot of them leading up to burnout or hit burnout. Um, a lot of the symptoms we sort of find with them is they're tired, they're overwhelmed, they're maybe a bit snitchy at home, a um, bit bored, and um, they're heading kind of towards a bit of a burnout. And they've really got no passion in their life anymore. They're just doing the days. And so we try and take them from there and and give them something, a little passion project to work on and, and, and work through. So I do high performance coaching as well. So I use a lot of that in the coaching that I do with um, life and business. So it keeps me busy. It makes me jump out of bed with a smile because I know that I'm really helping people. And um, yeah, I, I love what I do. Yeah, sounds amazing. And one of the things about burnout, right, is most of the time you don't even realise you're heading that direction, yeah? No, and the reason why it's somewhere I really, really like to help is it happened to me. So it was four years ago. I woke up one day. I was actually staying at my parents' place and my mum couldn't understand what I was saying. She thought I'd taken some sleeping tablet or something like that. Um, I was slurring. Um, I had like, massive headaches um, and then all of a sudden I started having these huge flashbacks from my job in the police force and um, I got diagnosed within a couple of days with PTSD, um, burnout, um, you know, anxiety, depression, everything. And seriously, it was like someone had come from behind with a cricket bat and just whacked me across the head. I had no indication this was going to happen um, you know, now that I look back, I see some little signs, but at the time I had no idea. And so it's really a space that I know exactly how these women are feeling. I know now looking back, what are the signs and it is a really hard place to get out of and you can mm. years and years and years and years. And, and that's the thing is like, I was just going to say what led up to it that, you know, um, what what are the signs but sometimes when you're in the middle of those sort of things especially us women right we think we can do it all we're the you know the center of the of the of the pack and um 
you know, we just take on so much and um, we think, you know, we can keep going, we can keep going, we can keep going and um, and there's something about society that, you know, if you're not, if you're not still going, then you're weak and, um, and it's actually not true. It's, you know, what, what were the signs that you can now see that, um, you know, you can now pick up on that for other women that might be going through the same sort of thing? I became very overwhelmed by very small tasks. So things that I would do very easily, um, at work and at home, um, just even something as simple as reading bank documents. I felt like I was reading something in another language. I just could not compute. I could not get anything to go in or understand. I had to start getting my mum or my brother to read things and tell me whether to sign or not like that. And they were just like, what? You know, like I'm university educated. I, you know, it's just a very strange. And I'm a maths nerd as well. So yeah. 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 I, I became a bit bored with life. I, I sort of got that. It's almost like it was like a travel itch or something. I didn't want to travel because I didn't really want to go anywhere. I didn't want to socialise. Um, so that was another thing. I kind of shut down there. I just wanted to stay home. Um, I was quite insular. Um, but I had that nervous kind of feeling in my stomach and it was just I felt like I was bored I felt like I was frustrated I couldn't put my finger on it exactly what it was but I just felt like I was getting up eating breakfast doing this coming back and it just felt like that hamster wheel just a little bit numb yeah yeah Mm, mm. yeah and so um so it was those little things now that I start to see and then just you know, getting really niggly with, you know, my son for small things, you know, like that didn't matter, but it it was just that overwhelm um, and not being able to deal with things as well. So not sleeping um, was another one, Um, starting to have really kind of vivid dreams um, where you wake up exhausted. So you start feeling tired. And so then you go, well, I'm tired. That's why I'm getting overwhelmed. That's why I'm feeling a bit this way. And so you start to then go, those things that you're feeling, they're explained by something else and that's why you don't start putting it down to, oh, hang on, there's some alarm bells going on here. Yeah, yeah. And so it just like it went from that to snap. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. And and which can be really scary, right, if, if you didn't have your mum there and some sort of support network. You know, like you just think, I, I remember as a single mum myself the overwhelm from just, you know, dealing with the day-to-day and, and being a mum of two kids and, you know, how am, I, how am I feeding them and putting, you know, um, the rent in and all that sort of stuff. That can be overwhelming in itself when, when you're in that state. Um, and to think that you could be really close to something as as dangerous as that burnout when you're the only one there and you might not have any support that's pretty scary right oh absolutely and um you know for me particularly it was the burnout but it was also the ptsd so i had the flashbacks the flashbacks were really quite violent and um and they were really confusing so if i I couldn't drive for a while, you know, I, I know, and that was another thing I noticed that I, I'm geographically challenged. So I, I need Me to, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but, but I would get in the car and I would go from, you know, somewhere like my uncle's house to my parents' house, for example, example something really simple, but I would end up somewhere else. Um, and I was always like, oh, well, put the navigator on, off we go. It didn't, I didn't even compute to me that it was an issue, but I was losing time. Time. Mm, I was losing blocks of time where I couldn't explain what I was doing. Yeah. And yeah. That, that was the scary thing. Yeah, yeah. I can imagine. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And, and um, you know, with all the stuff that's going on in the on the you know, in the world at the moment with, you know, I mean, I know myself I've dealt with a lot of clients that um, during lockdown and, um, 
you know, especially women. I, I, I had a lot of clients that were women living by themselves might have an animal that they were with but that had to start working from home mm. um, or lost their job and, you know, couldn't, couldn't um, get any further in, you know, like their whole world was crumbling. Um, just from things like, you know, the aftermath of COVID, that's, that can be PTSD in itself, right? Um, yeah. And so your group that you have, so, so how do you work with women? Like you've got, you've got a Facebook group called Burnout and Beyond. And how do you work? Do you work with men and women? Look, it's primarily women that come to me. So my main my main group that I work within is called Transform, Transform Thrive Unleashed. So we're all about, you know, accepting where we are, taking a bit of a, an audit, transforming, you know, the, the things that we need to transform so we can get towards that thriving. So we're rather than just surviving, and a lot of my clients will talk about, I felt like I was just literally surviving. Mm-hmm. Um, and then what we've done from there is because there were so many people in that burnout space, we've started kind of a, a monthly get together for those around burnout and beyond where they can come and get some education, but get some support as well. So there are the two groups, um, but both basically lead into the same thing. Um, but I just find um, what we do with burnout and beyond is more that, you know, get together. It's kind of like, AA without being AA kind of thing, you know, so come learn some things and it's, and it's for people so that, you know, you come in and quite often you can, you know, there's experts and they're experts in the field and and a hundred percent, they know what they're talking about, but it makes a big difference when someone says, I actually know what you're talking about. I've been through it. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Makes a huge difference. And so I'm able to help a lot of people through my experience and the whole thing with transforming through to thriving as well is that you know I had to make changes and I had to had to get some passion and purpose back in my life Mm -hmm. Um, otherwise if if I didn't have my son I wouldn't have got out of bed yeah yeah I know what you mean there exactly right like um my children also um, if I didn't have them, I would not be where I am now because they they give you a purpose, right? Absolutely, yeah. They give yeah. you purpose, but you lack passion. Yeah. 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 So you like you're passionate about them and what they're doing, but like once they go to school, everything's yeah. gone. Yeah. You know, everything's gone. And then they're coming home and you're like, right, we're back up again. Yeah, up, down again, and then you're up again, and the energy that that takes to be up, down, up, down, because you really want to be present for your kids, and you generally, you know, you see them, and like picking up my son from school is the best part of my day. Just his face lighting up when he sees me there, it literally is the best part of my day. But the time from when you drop him off to when you pick him up, you're alone. Hmm. Yeah, and so that's one of the things that I'm assuming you support women with. Um, is is discovering their passion. Mm. Yeah. It, it's interesting when you've got something you like you don't realise and you're like, oh, okay, all right, this is something. And a lot of them choose something that is around helping others. So something. That's us women, women, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Something yeah. they can do towards helping others. And really what we do is we, we learn about that, but we look at um, a lot of the high performance aspects, not that they need to be high performers, but a lot of them are. A lot of them in their workplace, when they were operating, when they wanted to be, were so efficient, were one of the best in the team, were the highly regarded ones. So we look at aspects like performance, like energy, courage, all of those things that a high performer has but what we do is we we sort of bring it down to, okay, where we need to be and trying to get back to that but with their passion. Yeah. So yeah. Let's bring energy to that. And when you dive into something that you love, everything else around you starts to have colour. Yeah. And, um, and so one of the things that I like asking women is, you know, at the end of these these sessions is um, what's the most um, valuable um, advice that you were ever given 
that that you really remember that sort of stuck out and supported you in in times when you needed it? Oh, geez. Um, uh, through if I if I actually think about through kind of my burnout and PTSD, um, the advice I was given was to find an anchor. Um, and that for me was my son. So finding something that grounds you um, so much that, um, you know, keeps you in reality, stops you from floating. Um, I often refer to my son as my antidote. Um, but, yeah, um, finding an anchor was a big one for me. So um, I felt like I didn't have... I, I didn't I didn't have that purpose I didn't have anything to hold on to because everything that mattered before didn't matter yeah yeah and so finding that anchor and some something that just kept me grounded that kept me from forgetting everything that was important um, was probably one of the things that got me through the most yeah and and what about those women that think you know like, you know us when we're just we're so freaking resilient, right? And and we think that we can just power through anything. And any women that are listening and and are having those signs that Nikki's talking about, what what would you like to say to anyone that you know, like because of, as you said, it's this flick, right? You wake up one morning and it's done already. Mm. And and as you said, no turning back. So. Um, do you have any anything that you'd like to suggest or because there's a lot of shame around it right a hundred percent there is and the the thing because it's mental illness effectively mm. right mm. You, you, burn, you burn out and you usually get labeled with you know some sort of mental illness the recovery rate um, from it is is not great um, and that's the thing, like once you've hit full-on burnout, um, getting back to where you were, and a lot of people will say, a lot of experts will say, you don't want to be where you were before because that wasn't safe. Yeah. But you have to try and go, well, who am I now? Yeah. If I can't be who I was before, who am I? What am I yeah. going to be? Like, I can't. Because and that's why I say a lot of the women I deal with are high performers because they've pushed themselves that much. And so then when you say you can't be that again, they they can't take being mediocre. They can't take not being able to perform at a hundred percent at work. They can't take not being able to drive five kids to five different locations at the one time. You know, they're just they've always been efficient. They've always been able to do all of these things. And then when you well one they can't they literally can't do it anymore um but secondly go and I've asked the question how do I get back to being normal again and they're like that, that's not normal it's yeah not normal to function like that yeah yeah and that, that was my normal and so then you have this grief that you've lost this sense of normal and then you then your identity is shot you don't know you know what you're who am I yeah so it's having to reconstruct, yeah. Yeah. So my advice to women is you might not see yourself going towards burnout, but look at things like uh personal development, you know, getting a coach, you might not people don't often go and get a coach or a mentor because they don't think they need it. They don't have a business or they don't have, you know, anything like that that they that they think they need. But, but society tells you that's that's when you that's when you need one is if you've got a business or yeah yeah hundred percent and um, and and what you'll find is that they will keep you on track by doing that I think it's a big difference to have that um, but yeah like it there's just no coming back from it you, there is no back to normal and that's how serious it is and I think anyone that is listening they might think well I'm fine I'm going to be fine. Like, wait till it's all taken away from you. Mm. It's not worth it. it like, to, to seek help before it happens. Um, yeah. You know, it, it's 
you can come back from that, but you can't come back once you've gone too far. Yeah, yeah. And that's, you know, strength within itself, right? Like that's something that that needs to be redefined in society and it's slowly becoming, um, it, it slowly is, but that that actually is strong. It's a strong person who can go, wait a minute, I'm, I'm heading in the wrong direction. I don't want to do this for the next 10, 5, 10 years. And I need some support in, in re, you know, redirecting myself so that there's this healthy um, medium for me and everyone in my life. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much, Nikki. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Um, and, and really, you know, if anyone's in um, Women of Light and feeling that overwhelm, then definitely take up the message. Don't think that that's not related to you, that it's, that it's something for somebody else. Be aware of how you're feeling as you're listening, if anything's triggering you, any excuses that are coming up. Um, and, you know, any shame maybe that might be even coming through and get in contact with Nikki. Nikki will put the, you're going to put all your details in um, below as well. So um, get in contact with Nikki. You've got some sort of discovery call, I'm assuming. Yeah, what I do is a lifestyle audit. So it's normally um, what I do as part of a paid program, but at the moment I just... Um, I'm just offering it for free because I really want to help as many women as I can. So yeah. what we do is a bit of a lifestyle order. We look at six key areas of your life um, and really just do an audit on where things are at and where what things might be, you know, a bit of a red zone, um, you know, and then you can go away with that going, okay, there's some things that I can really work on here. So I'll pop in, um, yeah, a link that you can book in for a lifestyle audit and, yeah, we can just chat one-on-one -on -one and, um, yeah. That, Go from there. Yeah, and we can also then help you get into the uh, Burnout and Beyond group or anything like that from there. Yeah, awesome. Sounds great. Thank you so much, Nikki. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Take care, everyone, and we will catch you soon. Bye.